7.45 now, and the Alex Murdoch murder trial will start week six later this morning in Walterboro. The trial gaining new attention after a Netflix documentary dropped last week, the same day that Alec took the stand in his own defense. Mm -hmm. Alec testifying for nearly 12 hours in total. Joining us right now with a recap and uh, the cross-examination is our very own Haley Spittler. Yeah, Alec Murdoch spent another long day on the stand Friday while the state continued their cross-examination. Prosecutors accusing Alec of being a busy bee around the time of the murders in June of 2021. This says he stands firm that while his actions hurt the ones he loved the most, he did not kill his wife and son. And joining me now to break it all down, including a new misdemeanor charge, is our morning trial analyst, attorney Lori Murray. Lori, things got tense Friday while the state questioned Alec about his timeline. He seemingly has a great memory of being at the kennel and leaving for his mom's uh, house the night of the murders. But things get more blurred those few minutes in between those two events. Walk me through that. Well, I think that there's a lot of stuff that he was blurry on. Like, how do you not remember the last conversation that you had with your wife? Um, you just said he didn't remember what they talked about when they were down at the kennels. But there was a lot of movement around the 10 minutes that after the deaths of Maggie and Paul. And during that 10 minutes, I think he had over 200 steps and he could not account for them. He said he didn't know what he was doing. That's kind of a big uh, tell, I guess. And we all know that he was there. That's the issue, but the timeline doesn't fit. So the question becomes, what were you doing during that time and who else was there with you? I know that the state questioned him a lot. He seems to say he went back to the house and fell asleep quickly. And then his nap was short before he went to his mom's house. Now, on the stand, Alex seems to be certain that no one else was at the home the times of the murders. He constantly denied that the other potential suspects could be those voting crash victims. Do you think this is a smart thing for him to do? He seems to kind of be pinning himself in as the only other person even home at the time of the murders. You're absolutely right. I could not understand why he did that. I think I would have at least said, I don't know if there was somebody else there. Uh, there was it's a big piece of property, but pinning himself as the only one there means that he's the only one that could have shot him because there's this short window of time there. And honestly, if you look at the amount of time when he left the, the kennels and went back to the house, their deaths occurred within like two minutes. He said it took like a minute and a half to get to the house and you're walking into that house. There's no way you wouldn't have heard the gunshots. Now, the lead prosecutor, Creighton Waters, wrapped up his cross again, talking about Alec lying about being at the kennels. He had previously mentioned his distrust of SLED as a reason for that lie and that paranoia. But Creighton went out by getting Alec to admit he lied to the first officer on the scene who was not a SLED agent. Did you like that ending? Was that a big kind of bang of an ending for Creighton? Or what were your thoughts? I think it was a very good point at the end for Creighton. You know, the entire two days of... Uh, cross-examination were spent on mostly on the financial crimes and to come in finally with something at the very end that says hey that's his ringer I guess his ringer question so it was a very good point to make the timeline was a good point to make it just should have come a lot sooner than that now Friday also raised some headlines as Alec Murdoch was charged with a new misdemeanor what do you know about this charge this is the case that keeps on giving them. I and when you think that there can't be anything else, there's something else. And we remember, if you remember, they, the family was moved back like four rows at some point during the trial because of some misconduct on behalf of the family. Well, that misconduct was the sister passing Ellen Murdoch a book. That book had not been approved by the security guards that were at the jail. And so that's considered contraband. Anything that's not approved by them it doesn't always have to be a phone or pills or anything like that. Anything that's not approved by them is contraband. So this was a charge that has been sitting there waiting. They were supposed to bring it after the trial. Somehow it ends up being brought during the trial. So I think you're going to see a motion for mistrial this morning. And I think the sister needs to be really careful because she could be charged with contraband too. And I do want to clarify, you're saying the book itself is the contraband. You don't think there was anything hidden in the book? There was nothing hidden in the book, and he passed a drug test that day. So nothing hidden in there. It was the book itself. All right, well, thank you for that insight, Lori. We'll continue to follow that story. And the trial picks back up in the Colleton County Courthouse at 930 this morning. The defense beginning to call some of their final witnesses. Don't forget, you can watch a trial inside the Fox Carolina News app. That can be streamed on Roku, Apple, and Fire TV. We also have a live blog and live chat on our website. 
We're showing you what that looks like right here on your screen. That way you can catch up on anything you missed or chime in with others watching in real time. Again, this is on foxcarolina.com. And attorney Lori Murray will be joining us every weekday right around 740, offering us her expert insights and main takeaways. Now.